All right, chapter seven, uh, blood collection equipment additives in order of draw. So the objectives that we're going to look at were obviously the same as usual, key terms, abbreviations, uh, list and describe equipment and supplies needed, compare and contrast antiseptics and disinfectants, identify needles by length and color coding, and then describe the tube system. Uh, we're going to look at the general categories of additives used and describe the color coding and order of draw. And the order of draw, note here, is key. Uh, so some of the general equipment that we need, we obviously need a blood drawing station, we need phlebotomy chairs, we need carts and trays. Now these are going to vary depending on where you work. Trays are usually no longer permissible. Um, they don't like you carrying them uh, just in case you do drop them. Um, Phlebotomy chairs um, can be elevated, they can be um, pediatric, they can be bariatric, um, which is uh, for overweight people. Um, so some of the other equipment that you're going to use, you're obviously gloves. Um, they need to be the CDC HICPAC standard precaution gloves. Um, they have to be within the OSHA bloodborne pathogen standard. Um, the, they have different types, non-sterile, disposable, um, latex, nitrile, neoprene, thermoplastic, polyethylene, vinyl. Um, most of the gloves that we use now are nitrile. Um, there's a lot of latex allergies out there, so we do tend to not have um, latex in the hospitals. You can use liners or barrier creams underneath gloves. Um, these are really for um, students and and healthcare workers that have allergies to gloves or uh, contact dermatitis or anything like that. Um, they help prevent irritation and they are compatible with latex gloves. However, it does make it difficult to put the gloves on. Uh, antiseptics, um, these are substances that are used to prevent sepsis. They're bacteriostatic, means they stop the growth of bacteria. You can use these on human skin. You're not going to cause any burns or any dry skin or any problems. 70% um, isopropyl alcohol is usually the common one that we see. Um, you have um, some others, povidone iodine, uh, the chlorohexidine gluconate, um, or benzocolonium chloride. Um, these are also used, but again, 70% isopropyl alcohol prep pads are usually the ones that you're going to see. Uh, disinfectants, um, these are chemical substances. These are bactericidals where they actually kill bacteria. Um, these are only for surfaces um, or um, instruments. They're not for human skin. Um, these are regulated by the EPA. Um, hand sanitizers, these obviously are only approved for use when hands are not visibly soiled. Um, contaminated hands need to be cleaned first with the wipe, then the hand sanitizer. Um, again, you know, washing hands with soap and water is best, um, but the hand sanitizers are acceptable um, for, for uh, five patients, and you need to wash them um, uh, with soap and water. Um, gauze pads, um, cotton balls, we don't usually use cotton balls anymore, but you, you may see them depending on where you end up working. Um, you need bandages, um, needles and sharps, um, disposal containers, um, glass slides if you're going to be making uh, push smears from a capillary puncture, which we will talk about later on, um, a pen, clearly, um, and a watch. Um, if you're lucky, you'll get a spot where um, they actually have vein locating devices. Uh, these actually um, will help illuminate uh, the vein. Um, they're quite expensive, um, and honestly, even a flashlight will do on a baby, you know, if you need to get in their hand. Um, you obviously need a tourniquet, some needles, um, an evacuated tube system, which you guys have already practiced, um, syringe system, if you're using syringes, a winged infusion set or a butterfly, um, combination systems um, also do exist. Um, the tourniquet, obviously proper application, allows arterial blood flow, um, but it obstructs the venous blood flow away from that area. Um, the changes um, that occur um, if the tourniquet is uh, left on longer than one minute, this is called hemoconcentration. Um, so you do not want to leave it on for one uh, more longer than one more mi one minute, excuse me. Um, this can um, give erroneous results. Um, there's all different types. Um, some of them can be latex, but most of them are vinyl now. Um, 
you have different types of needles. You have your multi-sample or your ETS, your hypodermic syringe, or your butterfly needle. Um, these are sterile, they're disposable, they're single use only. Um, you have a couple different parts of um, a needle. You have the bevel, the shaft, and the hub. Um, the gauge, the number related to is the gauge is the number related to the diameter of the lumen. The larger the gauge number, the smaller the actual diameter of the needle. Um, the color codes um, help make it um, easier uh, for when you're going, um, when you're on the go. Um, length one to one and a half inch is the most common. I prefer the one and a half inch, but um, the longer needles tend to sometimes freak out um, new students. I feel I have better control with those. Um, they are slightly longer to accommodate resheathing feature, um, and that's your safety device that you saw. Um, a half to three quarter an inch length um, is the butterfly length. Um, so here's an example of your evacuated tube system. The close evacuated tube system, um, this is a closed system, so you can um, collect numerous uh, tubes, which you already saw in class. Um, all different kinds of manufacturers make it. But you've got your three basic components, your multi-sample needle, needle um, the plastic holder or hub, and then different types of evacuated tubes. Um, evacuated tube system, again, um, the tube holder is the hub or the adapter. This is a clear plastic uh, cylinder with phalanges. Um, these help in the tube placement and removal, which you already saw. Um, the needles, again, multi-sample, and these are also color-coded. Um, the tubes, they're evacuated tubes. They can be plastic or glass. Most of them are plastic now. Um, they're really trying to get away from using glass because of um, the sharps potential. Um, there's different sizes and volumes. Um, pre, they have pre-measured vacuum in there, so you do have to be careful. Um, if you get air in there, um, it will not fill. Um, they have short draw tubes. They used to call them PD tubes, but now um, they're all the same size. They just don't fill as high. Um, they, some do have additives, like anticoagulants. Um, depending on what test you're collecting. Um, the tube stoppers are color-coded. Um, you have to be careful. Um, different manufacturers, they have similar coloring, um, but they are a little different. You can have a gold top, um, a red with a gold middle, or a red and gray tiger top. These are all the same type of tube with the serum separator SST tube, um, but each manufacturer has a different um, approach to it. Um, you can have non-additive tubes, so these are just plain tubes with nothing in it. Um, additive tubes, again, are anticoagulants um, or um, um, things that inhibit glycolysis. Um, trace element free tubes, these are special tubes um, if you need to draw a trace element like um, a lead uh, level, um, you're going to use that tube. Um, here's an example of uh, the Vacuet brand, and then you have the Vacutainer brand. Um, the syringe system, uh, we don't use this as often. This is used um, more often than not um, in the nursery um, when you have a more difficult draw. Um, but you have a 21 to a 23 gauge needle um, and syringe um, barrel with a graduated plunger, and then you have a transfer device. So there's um, your syringe. Um, the winged infusion set, the butterflies, these are uh, usually reserved for um, difficult or small veins, um, especially in the hand, um, children, infants, um, and difficult sticks. Um, the small needle is connected to a 5 to 12 inch length of uh, tubing. Um, you have to be careful. Um, you need to follow the safety devices uh, procedures on these. Um, because of that long tubing, you can potentially um, have an accidental needle stick. Um, I find it's helpful when I am um, using a butterfly to actually um, kind of before I use it, run my fingers down the butterfly um, tubing just to get any kinks out because that is curled when it's packaged um, and that'll keep the needle from flopping around. Um, they also have an S Monovet blood collection system. It's the same um, type of system but it allows uh, collection by ETS or syringe system with the same equipment. Um, 
So you have different blood collection additives. You have anticoagulants. These are substances that, um, that prevent blood from clotting. Um, some of the examples, you have EDTA. This binds or chelates calcium. You have citrates. Uh, this binds calcium. You have heparin, which inhibits thrombin, and oxalates that precipitate calcium. You'll see here that uh, calcium is a common denominator. Well, calcium is essential for the coagulation cascade, and it's, it's necessary to form a clot. Um, so when we are testing uh, something that uh, we want to keep them from clotting, well, we take calcium out. Um, with the citrates, it binds the calcium, so it renders it inactive. And we will use this when we're drawing uh, coagulation testing. Um, this is the sodium citrate too. It's a tube. It's a light blue. Um, this has a 9 to 1 anticoagulant ratio. This is used to um, test for your coagulation by um, taking that calcium out. It's spun down. The plasma is put on the instrument and uh, calcium is added back in to start the coagulation cascade again. Um, so it accurately um, evaluates um, how long your body takes to clot. Um, you have uh, special use anticoagulants like acid citrate uh, dextrose. This is ACD tubes. These are usually yellow top tubes. Um, the acid citrate is the anticoagulant and then dextrose is a red cell nutrient preservative. Um, citrate phosphate dextrose, your citrate is the anticoagulant and uh, biophosphate um, stabilizes the pH and dextrose will provide the nutrients again. Your SPS, your sodium polyanethyl sulfonate, um, it's an anticoagulant and it inhibits complement and phagocytosis and reduces antibiotic activity. Um, you can also see this in uh, blood cultures. Um, Antiglycolytic agents, these inhibit glycolysis, so your sodium fluoride and lithium iodoacetate, um, these will be used. Um, for example, we already talked about um, uh, drawing a glucose in a gray top, because um, obviously if you're in uh, sodium fluoride, it's going to inhibit glycolysis, uh, so you won't have to uh, worry about glucose breakdown over time, so that's why these can be um, unspun um, for a longer period of time. Um, clot activators, these are actually like particles, like silica particles, um, sealite, um, anything um, that actually has like an, a solid surface and these actually will initiate or enhance coagulation by giving larger surface areas for the clot to form. Um, your thiotropic gel separator, um, this is also known as your SST tube um, or gel tube. Um, this is an inert substance. It forms a physical barrier between cells and serum plasma. Um, when it's centrifuge. Um, what happens is as the centrifuge spins it produces heat. Well this gel will undergo a viscosity change when it's heated um, and it'll cause the gel to move from the bottom of the tube um, to up above the red cells um, but below the plasma or serum. Um, the gel has a consistency um, almost like a little more solid uh, petroleum jelly. The order of draw, now this is huge. The order of draw, this is a special sequence of um, when you're collecting multiple tubes, this will minimize problems. One of the big problems is carryover or crossover. This means you can, if you're drawing more than one sample, you can transfer additive from one tube to another, and the most common is that EDTA. The EDTA is potassium EDTA, so if you draw that lavender top or that EDTA tube before a chemistry test and you're testing for potassium, you could falsely elevate that potassium level. Um, so we obviously try to fill the tube from the bottom up. There's also been talk about um, tissue thromboplastin contamination, so when the skin is pierced and picked up in that needle um, and then flushed into the first tube it's collected, they're not really looking at this as much. Um, we also worry about microbial contamination. Um, if the, the surface um, has not been cleaned appropriately, we can have false positive blood cultures. So they like to um, collect that first or separately. So here is your order of draw. So first you're going to do blood cultures or your SPS. Um, then your light blue, your coagulation, or your sodium citrate. Then a red top tube. Um, then your separator tube. Then, so that's a red or a gray 
marble rubber or a gold top. Um, then you can do um, your PSTs or your heparin, so your green tubes. Then the lavender tube can come, um, and then your gray top last. Um, they used to have an alternate um, syringe draw, um, but now they're actually, they've now changed it, um, so this PowerPoint does not reflect that change, but the syringe order of draw is now the same. That's um, the newest CLSI guidelines. So, um, that is your equipment in a nutshell. I know it seems like we've talked a lot um, just on equipment, um, but my advice to you is start looking at the different tests um, and different color tubes and start using flashcards to practice. Um, so hopefully you find this helpful. Um, this will help us uh, save a little time in class and still give you my special notes. Um, and I will try and do this for chapter 8 and 9 also.